the true power of the sun revealed how cosmologist Brian Cox performed a brilliant experiment. This is on Express UK by Callum Hoare, today's article. Well, we were studying brown dwarf stars and what that means, because we have a brown dwarf star at the edge of our solar system. This is what NASA confirmed a couple of years back. And that's, of course, not good news. That's too close to us. The true power of the sun was demonstrated by Professor Brian Cox during a documentary on our sun. And it may not be good news for our future. The sun is the biggest star located at the center of our solar system. And it's a near perfect sphere of hot plasma and is believed to have a diameter of about 864,000 miles, 109 times the size of our Earth. The reaches and reaches temperature of about 15 million degrees Celsius. The sun is by far the most important source of energy for life on our Earth, with three quarters of its mass consisting of hydrogen. Scientists have for years been fascinated by the power of our sun as they try to calculate how much longer hydrogen fusion can continue on our sun before it implodes, well, it's going to first of all expand and contract. It's going to expand to 200 times the size that it has today, then contract becoming a red dwarf. Professor Brian Cox revealed during his BBC series titled A Collection of Wonders, how scientists almost 200 years ago were trying to calculate the remaining energy of our sun. This is what he said in 2013 during this documentary. For centuries, the finest minds in science struggled to understand the origin of the sun's seemingly endless heat and energy. What is it made of? Where did it come from? And what is the source of its phenomenal power? Then in 1838, British physicist John Herschel carried out an experiment to attempt to capture a sunbeam. Yes, he wanted to capture a sunbeam. So how much energy falls on the surface of the Earth today? Can you work it out with a simple experiment using only a thermometer, a tin full of water, and an umbrella? Professor Cox then demonstrated the experiment to viewers, and he said, you let the water heat up in the tin to ambient temperature, which right now in Death Valley is 46 degrees centigrade. Then you put the thermometer in the water and take the shade away and let the sun shine on the water. In direct sunlight, the water temperature begins to rise, and by timing how long it takes the sun to raise the water temperature by 1 degree centigrade, you could figure out exactly how much energy the sun delivered into the can of water. And from that, how much energy is delivered to a square meter. The sun currently sits in what is known as the main sequence. It's a band of stars in hydrostatic equilibrium, meaning it is resting at a constant point due to external forces such as gravity. But scientists believe it is roughly halfway through a, this main sequence process. In other words, it's, it's, through its, it's halfway through its life as a star. Eventually, the star will not be big enough to create fusion, and as a result, will not have enough energy to create light. Experts do not believe this will happen for another 5 billion years, but it could be the end of life as we know it. Professor Cox detailed how scientists still use this experiment to measure how much energy the sun holds, to calculate how much it is decreased by. And he added, it turns out that on a clear day when the sun is overhead, that number is today about a kilowatt. That's 10 100 watt, uh, watt bulbs for every meter of the Earth's surface. Herschel used this to calculate the entire energy given off by the sun. So imagine if we add up the kilowatts over the entire surface of the Earth. The sun's power is 400 million, 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 million watts. Now how do we calculate the lifetime of the sun? 
This is according to Curious Astro, Cornell University. How can I calculate the age of the sun using classical physics? I know it's estimated to have a life of about 10 million years, but was this calculated? It requires a bit more than classical physics, but still you can estimate the sun's lifetime from a very simple calculation. First of all, if you want the current age of the sun around 50, 5 billion years, 5 billion years, this number is determined from radioactive dating of objects in the solar system which are known to have formed around the same time as the Sun. Now the total lifetime of the Sun before it becomes a red giant is, as you say, around 10 billion years, meaning that the transition will occur about 5 billion years from now. And this can be estimated by assuming that the Sun will die when it runs out of energy to keep it shining. The time for this to occur is roughly the total energy the Sun has that can be turned into light, dividing divided by the rate at which the sun is giving off energy. The rate at which the sun emits energy, its luminosity, is about 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts. That's the number 38 followed by 25 zeros, quite a lot of light bulbs. This number can be determined from measurements of how bright the sun appears from Earth as well as its distance from us. The total energy that the sun has to burn requires a little extra knowledge. For example, some nuclear physics to understand. We know that the sun shines via nuclear reactions in the core that transforms four hydrogen atoms into one helium atom. And if you look at a periodic table, you'll see that one helium atom has a little less mass than four hydrogen atoms combined. About 0.7% of the original mass has disappeared. And this missing mass gets transformed into energy and this is the energy that causes the sun to shine. Therefore, using Einstein's famous formula E equals mc2 for the conversion between mass and energy, we have that the available energy of the sun is equal to E equals 0 0.007 times mc2, where c is the speed of light and m is the amount of mass in the sun that's capable of undergoing the nuclear reactions. Now, it turns out that only the central part of the sun is at a high enough temperature to actually undergo these reactions. And you would need to use a detailed model of the sun's structure to figure out exactly how much of the sun is at a high enough temperature. But if we're just estimating things, we can say that on the order of 10% of the sun's mass is in the central part of the sun where it is hot enough to undergo nuclear reactions. When we have E equals to 0 0.007, times 0 0.1 times m sun c2, where m sun is the total mass of the sun in kilograms. We therefore can calculate that the total amount the sun has to burn is about 1.3 times 10 to the 44 joules. So they have various uh, uh, things here that state uh, 1 to the third times 10 to the 44 joules divided by 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts, the rate at which the sun is giving off energy, into this number, given the appropriate value of 10 billion years for the sun's lifetime. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.